Hey, what up everyone? I'm Cynical, and this is Gems of War. And today we have Weekly Event, The Lion and the Unicorn, ends in 6 days, 16 hours, 51, 41 minutes, whatever. The, li the Lion and the Unicorn, we'll do this in a minute. We're going to go do the Soul Forge, the, the scoring for the World Event, and a World Event team, and then we'll go back to that. Uh, that way we get everything y'all want in the front of the video. So, Soul Forge time. Let's go. Let's see if the Arachnian Weaver's still in there. That's what's interesting. It's been in there for two weeks. I was wondering how long it was going to be in there. Uh, let's check it out. We have... Um, let's see. We got the Scourge of Honor. That's kind of weird. That's coming out on Nintendo Switch this week. Ishtara. Um, what else? Ooh, Arachnian Weaver is still here. They're just leaving it up, man. You guys need to quit doing those consumer reports and, like, reporting them to... Like, just chill, man. Like, come on. It's enough. It's enough already. This is the third week the Arachnian Weaver's in the Soul Forge. It's one of the best troops in the game. Do you want the game to go away? Just chill out on all that stuff on the forum, man. Um, I think they did fine. After, you know, it's the third week in a row. Come on. And Furnace. If you don't agree, then sorry. Wolf Garrick. All right. So, we have three decent mythics here. That's really nice. Of course, Arachnian Weaver is the number one mythic. If you still don't have it, then you need to get it number one. It's the best here in the Soul Forge. Um, second would be Infernus, I would say. Probably. It's really close, man. Infernus used to be a top ten. It's probably still barely hanging on. But uh, Scourge of Honor, you can do some crazy stuff with, like, two of these. Um... But yeah, I'm going to go with Infernus just for now, but they're pretty close these days. Um, but I don't think Scourge of Honor is a top 10 yet, so I'm going to go with Infernus. I think he's like falling out of the top 10, but maybe still there. I need to redo my list for 2021. But anyway, so Rackney Weaver's number one, right? Number two would be Infernus. 24 red, yellow, purple, Broken Spire, Divine Elemental. So you can half start him with Divine or Elemental. So the Mirage Queen or Divine Ishbala. Uh, deals splash damage to two random enemies, and it's pretty heavy. And it explodes five random gems, which is pro it's pretty much the whole board. He also burns all enemies on four or five gem matches, and summons a firestorm when an enemy dies. So it does multiple things, that's why it's good. It doesn't just do one thing, and then it turns over. It, ex it does splash damage, and it's pretty heavy, like I said. And then it explodes the whole board, so it's pretty similar to Arachnian Weaver, just not true damage. And then it burns all the enemies and summons a firestorm. So it's really nice with troops that need a firestorm. Or, or, or burn. That's what I meant to say. A burn or a firestorm. All right. So number three this week would probably probably be the Scourge of Honor. But though Ishtar was pretty nice as well. <clears throat> but I've seen more like viable teams with the Scourge of Honor doing like difficulty 12 explore with like two of them or something. So we'll just say they're tied. The Scourge and Ishtar are pretty close. They're all decent, too. They're, like, probably top 20, top 25. Um, 22, red, green, brown, Cinema Mirage, Daemon, Wild Folk. Deal true damage to all enemies. Gain two mana back for each cursed or diseased enemy. Cure, curse and disease are random enemy when matching four or more gems. Explode a green gem at the start of battle. So it does multiple things. Once again, that's what we want to see with Mythics. Multiple good things. True damage. Gain mana. Curse and disease are... Random enemy when matching four or more gems. Explode a green gem at the start of battle. Does multiple good things. Ishtara. A good mythic. Not top 10 or anything, but possibly top 25, top 20, something like that. 25 red, yellow, purple, dragon's call, divine dragon. Deal damage to all enemies. Create nine yellow gems boosted by blessed allies. So it has potential to loop. Its turn just doesn't just end. Like, you know, Suna or something. Divine Roar, 50% chance to bless a random ally when my turn begins. Holy Armor, reduce damage from Skulls by 40%. And those are good too. So, and you can half mana start it with Divine or Dragon. So nice. Alright, the worst one this week is Wolf Garrick. He's one of the worst in the game. Um, you could probably figure out ways to do stuff with him so he's not the, the worst. But uh, 22 Red, Green, Purple, Magrim Woods, War Gare Beast. He's like the... I don't know. He's kind of like Ubastad, I guess I would say. Deal damage to an enemy boosted by Wargare allies. If an enemy dies, devour a random enemy. Um, and no good traits other than Impervious, which is just nice to have. You want to see more than just Impervious. It's nice. It's a good second trait, but not the best trait on it. Yeah. 
All right, let's check, take a look at the legendaries. And they're probably at the top, you dumb dumb. Um, so we got Dracos, the ruler. We got uh, King Salinas. We have Urskula and Dulahan. Dulahan's one of the worst. Urskula, 50% start. King Salinas, 50% start. And Dracos. So I'd probably say King Salinas is the best this week. I've actually used him occasionally during certain restrictions. He has a 50% start for Wild Folk. 14 red, yellow, Pan's Veil, Wild Folk. Deal splash damage to an enemy boosted by Wild Folk allies. Steal one magic from all enemies boosted by my spell. Then burn all enemies. Another troop that burns all enemies. The only thing is you have to cast a spell first. With uh, with Infernus, you just have to match uh, four or more. Uh, wild mana, all Wild Folk allies start with 50% mana. And Impervious. There you go. So that's what I meant. Um, second would be uh, Urskula. 15 yellow, green, Urskaya, Urska Mystic, deal scatter damage boosted by enraged allies, enrage all allies and give them 6 attack, Urska allies start with 50% mana. So, 50% star troops, you want you want them all. You want them all, they might not be top 10 or something, but you, you want them all. Dual hands the worst, and Draco's probably third this week. He's just a neat dragon, he's nothing, he's like very middle of the pack. 15 purple, yellow, Adana, mech, dragon, silence, stun, and drain mana from an enemy with a 25% chance to destroy them. Um, you see I don't have it traded. That shows you how I think about it. But uh, it's not terrible. It's like middle of the pack. It's it's a fun dragon. Then Dulahan, one of the worst legendaries in the game. If, I, if I'm going to do the top five worst legendaries, he'll probably be on the list. 18 red, brown, Galvania, undead knight. Deal damage to an enemy boosted by ally and enemy deaths. Kill either the first enemy or the first ally. It kills your first ally. Like, come on. That's stupid. Summon a Vargoyle, but it's 50% chance. It'd be cool if it's 100% chance. That way, if you when you kill that first ally, you summon a Vargoyle. That would be a little bit better, but it's only a 50% chance. So, he's terrible. Let's check out the weapons. Should be Rope Dart here. If Rope Dart's here, it's the number one this week. Since Arachne Weaver's been in the Soul Forge for three weeks now, I would say Rope Dart would be the number one. So if it's in here, then it's number one, and Arachne Weaver's number two. Uh, we got Trick and Treat still. I thought that was only for the last week. What's the point now? Can you still get the Devil? Probably not. That's probably why. Twin Calls is decent. But let's make sure. There it is. So this is the best, this is arguably the best weapon in the game. So, on over Dawnbringer, over uh, Life and Death, over Reflection of Good, or whatever you want to say, this is probably one of the best weapons in the game. I would say it's top 5, 100%. Eliminate all armor from an enemy and deal 42 damage to them and pull them to first position. Okay, so what's the big deal, right? Well, it entangles the first enemy, I think. It's, it's all in its uh, skills or whatever. It gains an extra turn. It entangles. It like You pair it with a class at Hunter's Marks, and then, man, it's just it's got an extra turn on it. Okay? And it does true damage, basically, because it eliminates all armor from them and then deals damage. Pulls them to first slot. That way, they're entangled. Usually, Hunter's Marked. And you get an extra turn. You can match some skulls, do heavy damage. It does true damage, basically. It's just one of the best weapons in the game. Um, so let's go back and look over everything else. So that's the first, you should get that. Don't leave this week without it. Rope dart, rope dart, rope dart, rope dart. Then Arachne and Weaver, then Infernus. Twin Claws is, is notable. Explode green gems, grant a random status effect to all beast allies, and summon a beast troop. It's one of those. Those are good. Um, Black Mane's Claw, deal damage to an enemy, boosted by Raksha allies, then create a mix of red and brown gems for each Raksha ally. It's one of those. Those are a step under the, the one I just showed, but those are still okay and decent for certain restrictions. Cat's Paw. Deal damage to an enemy boosted by Pride Lands allies and create a mix of six green and red gems for each Pride Lands ally. Same as uh, Black Mane's Call as far as tier. Beastly Bow. Deal damage to an enemy boosted by beast allies. Same thing. It's, it's Beastly Bow, Cat's Paw, and Black Mane's Claw. They're all about the same, but they're still decent. Um, I would say Twin Claws is like a tier above them, but these are all like B tier. Rope Dart's S tier. Um, Twin Claws is like B tier. And then, Bla and then Black Mane's Claw, Cat's Paw, and Beastly Bow are like, you know, C tier. 
B minus, something like that. Um, Spear of Pride, I don't have this. So I'm probably gonna get it. There we go. Uh, deals damage to an enemy, steal five points from a random skill if the enemy is fade, deal triple damage. Those are, that's crap. It's like D tier. And, um, yeah. That's it. So Rope Dart, number one, don't leave this week without it. Arachnian Weaver, number two, if you haven't got one yet, don't leave this week without it. Then Infernus is number three, in my opinion. Though Scourge of Honor and Ishtara are pretty close behind it. Alright, so yeah, that's the Soul Forge. Trick and Treat is still there, by the way, but uh, you, I don't think you can get the Devil anymore, so it is what it is. Um, so let's go check out the World Event. I'll tell you the scoring. We've got the Hunting the Leocorn World Event. All right, let me check out the scoring. So, the Leocorn is worth one horn, which is the most. Umanath is worth 18. Behemoth is worth 15. These are tracks, so they're worth least or less. So, Leocorn's worth the most. Umanath, second most. Behemoth, third most. Shadow Hunter is next. Then Werecat, then Salamander. So, Leocorn's worth the most. Salamander's worth the least. It looks like... Uh, rarity order, right? Umanath's a mythic, Behemoth's a legendary, Shadow Hunter's like an epic, right? Werecat and Salamander. So, Leocorn, number one, it probably has a different emblem, so you'll be able to tell. Then Umanath is the mythic, that's second. Behemoth is the legendary, that's third. Salamander is the worst. Uh, Lore, we recruited some Rajashi, woo, Raj Shahi guides to help us hunt through the pride lands for clues to the whereabouts of this new magical creature collect tracks and horns from creatures in the pride lands to further your hunt we got uh spell damage 160 percent spell damage gonna buy up in the shop actually let's get our rewards first so i know how much to buy i want to medal for video purposes got a badge unless there's a weapon then i'll buy up to the weapon but i don't see one so we will buy till I get a medal just to show a video. Alright, we got a, a, a badge. And I don't really have a lot of gems, guys. Uh, good thing the Vault Event's coming up, because I had to use a ton of gems on that uh, Faction Assault to get it to 500 Pure Faction. Deathless and all that. But there we go. I haven't taken my uh, tasks yet either, though, so I could go do that. Alright, so we Salamander's the worst. So we go Werecat here. And let's see what we got, what we're working with. Show me what you're working with. Base Rarity. Ubastet, probably not terrible for this event since he hits multiple enemies. But we do want to see troops that hit every single enemy. So you could make it, if you really love Ubastet, I mean, you could figure it out, I'm sure. But, and, and like that. Uh, four random enemies, that might be okay. Indrigit. 44 damage boosted by red and purple gems to four random enemies. I mean, it could hit the same dude twice, but... Sekma... An enemy. Um, nope. It does make a hellstorm, though. Which I think is purple and red. Maybe. Um, an enemy. An enemy. Nope. An... Red and purple. We could go with the Indrigit and do that red and purple. Uh, Tigraki Warrior, Pride Hunter. That's it. Ooh. What about the weapons? Just red weapons, huh? Um, We got Dawnbringer. I mean, for today, I'd probably just throw the Dawnbringer up there. But uh, Trick and Treat. Just quickly look through these. Um, Burning Scythe, if you don't have... What else? Anything? I'm looking for stuff that hits all enemies. I mean, you could use Imperial Jewel if you're just, like, strapped. You don't know what to do. Um, let's see. Yeah. But, I think Dawnbringer would be good this week. Or Injurjit.
So I'm just going to go with the Dawnbringer for today. Tomorrow's Team's Tuesday, so I'll try to make you some sort of either Endrigit or Ubistet team. Tomorrow, plus a no-no-no, which is no Mythic, no Legendary, no Dawnbringer. So I'll have to figure it out without Ubistet, without Endrigit, without Dawnbringer. So look forward to that tomorrow. Team's Tuesday. All right, so what we're going to do here is I want yellow troops... That way our Dawnbringer does more damage, and I also want troops that are going to give me some sort of mana, hopefully. So, not that. Destroy a 3x3 three three block. Give 34 attack to all allies above me, and give 3 magic to all allies below me. So he'd probably have to be on the team. Uh, a Hellstorm, but he doesn't do it unless he casts. And then Ubastet. Hmm. We'll just put him on there for fun, and then we'll just put another second claw and her. This is not the greatest team ever, but we're mostly just using our potions to get up Dawnbringer to cast it once and win. Um, and these guys will be here to, you know, explode the 3x3 three three block, or destroy it, whatever. So our banner is going to be either a double yellow or double red. Could do double red, yellow, minus brown. That Ubistet uses brown, though. Double yellow, red, uh, minus green. That looks good. And then class, we probably want a firestorm. But uh, I'll be leveling something up. So I'm going to choose bard here. Just because I level, I'm level, i leveling bard up. It's a yellow class. I think it has a 50% start. Yeah, right here. So if I was you, I would use sun spear as my class. Um, I'm just doing Bard to level it up. Look, I got Barbarian to 99. Woo. Alright, so Bard, we got double yellow, red, minus green. And we're doing a Dawnbringer team, basically, today. If I gotta make these quicker, these teams, and put them in the front of the videos, then I'm just gonna do the easiest thing that comes to mind. So, that was it. Got that. We might want to do an Anu, because we might have a little bit of mana troubles. And then a Nisha. So we got, a uh, one medal for the, from the event, an Anu, and a Nisha. And let's go. Let's just show this team. We'll do like three or four battles. I'm not... I need to get to... Next is... uh. Well, that's about it. We'll go back to the beginning. Redo the weekly preview. We got all the good stuff in the front. Go over the other events. The campaign. That kind of stuff. The faction assault team early. Um, see Dawnbringer's up. And the enemy dies. And you get all these barriers, so if you have to cast it twice, at least you're protected. You could maybe put second hand hand here in the front, but not this early. Alright, we got Werecat. There's never any harm going for the high, higher level battle. Usually it's the way to go, actually. And if it's not the way to go, then it's not the wrong way to go. It's never the wrong way to go, basically. What the heck? Sorry about that. One second. Alright, let's continue here. That was crazy. I, there's a spider crawling on me. I grabbed it and threw it. Now I don't know where it is. <laughs> oh well. Should I leave that in? If I left it in, then that'd be funny, but I don't know. If, I probably won't leave it in. I'm gonna listen to it first. Sheesh. Alright, let's go. Let's go, baby. We're just doing Dawnbringer stuff using yellow, all yellow, and we got explosion potion, we got enchant potion. We'll use it until it stops one-shotting, you know what I mean? And then we'll probably switch to, like, Ubisoft or Indrajit or something. Alright, one more time. One more again with the boneless cutter, too. There we go. Alright, so now let's move on to everything else. I'm going to go back to the beginning, like my normal weekly preview now. I'm not going to redo, like, the Soul Forge or the World event, but we'll go back and hit what we missed. Uh, putting all the good stuff in the beginning... For the wishy-washies. Alright, so... Let's go to the events. Okay, so it's the Lion and the Unicorn. A new epic troop, Leocorn. Get this troop with glory from the rewards tab of the shop. Hunting the Leocorn. Experience a new world event with your guildmates. Play world event battles every day to unlock rewards. Talisman of Wild Magic. 
Week of Raksha, all Raksha gain 10% to their skills. Week of Beasts, all Beasts gain 10% to their skills. And bonus gold, use the Leocorn in PvP and Explorer to gain 400 gold. Um, and then the Glory Shop. Uh, I gotta grab my... You definitely want this right now, because the new kingdom's coming out, and the way you're gonna get all those kingdom troops is either... is through gold keys and event keys, kinda. I mean, you could use glory keys, but then all the troops are in the... Well, we'll see. I haven't seen a new kingdom in a while, so I forget how it goes. But you definitely want to just save keys. Other than getting this mythic on Friday, this mythic on Friday looks amazing, so you definitely want that. But save as much as you can other than getting that mythic. I would say that's more important. Getting the mythic is more important than saving a bunch of keys for the kingdom. Uh, we got uh, Leo Corn here. 10 red, blue, pride lands, beast, mythic, create, mystic, I meant. Create three wild cards. If another ally is enchanted, gain an extra turn, and then enchant a random ally. Reduce damage from skulls by 25%. Spells, I mean. Wild magic, 25% chance to create a times two wild card with matching four or more gems. So, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure on this guy, honestly. It could be good. Three wild cards... And let's say you already have, like, your whole team enchanted. Gains an extra turn. And then you enchant. And then you can match those wild cards with something. Because he got, he's got an extra turn. Um, and then also the wild magic there. So, I don't think it sounds amazing or anything. But, let's go ahead and get it to Mythic. I've given in, guys. I do this now. I've got way too much glory. And, might as well. But Arcane Blood Trace Stones is what it comes into the game with, which is blue, red. You get uh, two of them. So let's go check out the troops you could fully trait with those trait stones. Blue and red. Blue, red, all colors, base rarity. Um, Troops such as... Uh, you got Megavore, you got Death Below. I'm not going to say every single one of them. I just wanted to... Uh, Mother of Darkness, Blood Mark... Just ones that are notable to me. Savage Strike. Uh, you got Captain McCall here. Rogue Allies. That's important right now. Um, anybody else? You got uh, the Mirage Queen. Very important. Drowned Crew. All Elemental Allies. Start with 50% mana. Does he do anything? Freeze and burn a random enemy. Matching four or more gems. That's not bad. That's good. Um, anything else? Just having the Mirage Queen is very important. So if you don't have the Mirage Queen fully traded, there you go. Now's the time. Um, is that it really? I don't see anything else. Yeah, that's about it. Mirage Queen, Frostfire King, and then all the mythics I mentioned that could possibly use the stone. Make sure to double check me. But the Lord of Slaughter, very important. Uh, Megavore, Captain McCall. Um, yeah. All right, let's check out the drop table for the event keys now. We have Pride Lands troops. Let's go check them out. Uh, is it up from the bottom? P? Right down from the top. Ah, eh, that wasn't too long. Alright, so you can get mythics such as Ubastet and Umanath. That's very, very average. I don't know if I would recommend throwing keys for those. Probably not at this point. Endrigit, you get from the Underworld, so he doesn't count. Um, Sekma's okay, but she's not a good enough, like, consolation prize if you're going for, like, Ubastet, for example. You could throw a bunch of event keys which, with the new kingdom coming up, get Umanath, and then... Uh, Sekma, like, that's not worth it. And even Ubastet's really not worth throwing, like, 2,000 event keys for. He's not that good. He's okay. Um, other than that... You know, Bandit. That's about it. So, big pass. Big pass, in my opinion. Alright, what else we got going on? Normally, uh, let's go look at the events for the week... Alright, so today's the world event, the campaign. Tomorrow we have Faction Assault. Must be Endrigit or whatever. Let's go check it out. Should be right under Pride Lands. Where's Pride Lands? But then I have to find Pride Lands. You know what I mean? Like, this is a good tip. 
But I have to find Pride Lands. There it is. Alright, so now we go to the Underworld, right? And it should be right under it. There it is. Endridge's Palace. Um, so, Faction Assault for this. I would say... What to use? Probably Ferocity. Yeah, Triple Ferocity, Rage Reaver is what I would go with. I do Ferocity, Ferocity, Rage Reaver, Ferocity, Shaman Class, Double Red, uh, I think Brown or, or Blue, and then minus the color you're not using. Um, if you don't have Rage Reaver, let's check it out. Probably Double Gargoyle or Triple Gargoyle with Mount, Mountain Crusher or Stone Slicer would be a way to go. And you can, I, got, I got Gargoyle on my new account that's under level 500, so I'm sure you got it. You got Arachnian Weaver here. You got uh, Guard's Avatar, Ketris the Bull, Megavor. Uh, so yeah, if you don't have Triple Ferocity, if you don't have Rage Reaver, because I'm sure you got Ferocity. You got Scourge here, Wild Queen, Lord of Slaughter, Tina. Then I would honestly, if I didn't have Triple Ferocity, Rage Reaver, I'd probably go with uh, Gargoyles. Um, there's Zulgoths available. You can make a Zulgoth team. Some, like, Flamifer, Zulgoth, uh, Scylla, and Thrall or something, if you're able to use it. Probably not. Not Thrall, but, you know, another empowered converter or empowered exploder. But, yeah, that's about it. You know, I'd use Triple Ferocity. Or you got Queen Titania. You could do a Queen Titania uh, Yao Gui team. So, yeah. Purple you could do. We just did Purple last week. That's, like, uh, um... Zulgoth, of course, right? Um, purple, Triple Cunning Stone Slicer. Um, I always have trouble with purple, but yeah. Racking Weaver. Alright, let's get back to games. Alright, Wednesday we have the, the Pride Lands pet. Uh, Thursday we have Sunspear, really good class, potentially top 5. Go check out my top 5 classes. Um, I guess I'll link it at the end of this video if I remember top five class video that I put out a few weeks ago. Uh, Sunspear is, if it's not top five, it's really close, but I think it is. And then this weekend we have um, Vault Event, so awesome. New Mythic Friday and a Vault Event. Oh, that's always the best, dude. When those two line up, I'd rather have them separated and everything, but that's probably the best combo. I hate when it's like new, new Mythic and new Faction. I think that happened once. But New Mythic and Vault Event, that's, that's the best weekend. So yeah, new mythic this Friday. It sounds really good. It blows up green. It gets an extra turn. It's a goblin. It summons goblins, and then it has some uh, good traits, I think. So sounds really good. Um, is that it? Are we done? A uh, campaign event or campaign? Let's go check that out. All right, Tassarion named the creature the Moon Phoenix. It seemed to be linked to a new type of magical energy, something wild and chaotic. He had heard rumors of a similar creature in the Pride Lands, so he set out to learn more. Uh, hunting Behemoth, that's probably something you're going to do in the either the World Event or in PvP. Dungeon Lord wins six dungeon battles. I'm re-rolling that, because that takes multiple days. I'd rather get it done today. Intrepid Explorer, when Explorer runs in Pride Lands at difficulty 2 or higher, that's not bad. Uh, what are you guys getting? This week. Kitterfly. New pet. A book. And then we get three attack. Alright, so yeah, that's it for uh, this week. Uh, remember to like, share, subscribe. Consider joining, it helps a lot. Tell your guild about the channel, comment below, and I'll see y'all tomorrow for the Teams Tuesday video. We'll do something other than Dawnbringer, and we'll do a team with no Mythic, no Legendary, and no Dawnbringer. Today's the 1st of November, so... Yeah, let's start it off strong, guys. Hit like, comment, tell somebody. Consider joining. It helps a lot. It's $1.99. You get a badge that levels up. You get uh, custom emojis for Gems of War. And you get a shout-out. So, yeah, would really appreciate it. Uh, link in the description. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Teams Tuesday. Later. Later.